Welcome back, everybody. Well, today marks, if I've counted everything correctly, episode number 1000, which is quite a lot. So today I thought I would take you all on hopefully a very brief world tour. It was a year or two ago, I think I did a more in-depth uh, multi-episode one, so I'm going to try and keep this one down to one. Hopefully, maybe two episodes. You know how sometimes I get a little long-winded on things. And I'll put links uh, to all the previous uh, World Tour in the description below. So you can go see all the individual places if you want a super more in-depth uh, overview of the world. So we're going to start here. Nestled beside this small lake on the edge of the icy biome is my spawn point. So this started off as a small little cave dug straight into a dirty hillside and I've expanded it with stables, multiple villager houses, farm, sheep, cows, and even a fishing dock. So not much has changed on the inside. It's about the same. We have a storage area, a sleeping area, the nether portal down below. A tiny little brew station and uh, down this long corridor with some storage here and there is my uh, skeleton spawner XP farm. And then attached to that I've got this large open uh, fishing area so I can sit there and fish while I wait for skeletons to spawn and it makes a nice tower overlooking the spawn village. So a later addition to the spawn area was this iron farm, which I modified a few times, but it still produces a ton of iron for me. And then over here, just outside the spawn chunks, is this little old-style villager breeder. I'm not even sure it works. So if we head uh, southwest out here from Spawn, we will cross this uh, large forest and finally reach the city of Marigold. So this started as a small natural Minecraft village with a couple uh, houses and stuff. And then I uh, added a wall around it and a number of additional houses and buildings to make it a full city. So the city actually gets its name from the nearby Marigold Lake. So this is one of my first mines I set up. I just found a cave and dug down. It was on the edge of the lake here. So this is a popular hiking area. So I've got a path that runs all along the lake over the top of the cliff here. We have a rest area which provides a nice overview of the whole valley. And following the path back around, you get all the way down here, past the horse meadow, and back to Marigold City. So at some point, I ended up with a ton of extra villagers and thought it'd be nice if they had a nice safe haven where they didn't have to worry about pillagers or zombies or any other things eating them. So I have picked out this island over here not so far from Spawn, it is completely centered with water and a wall, and it is a safe haven, so I call it Peace Island, where my villagers can peacefully live and exist. So this is uh, completely walled, protected by the water and the lake running around it, and it is zombie-free, so we have stores, houses, farms, and also hosts the uh, main Church of the Zombie with the large, very large zombie statue here overlooking the whole area. 
We also have libraries, a big clock tower, numerous shops. Uh, out east, we have a bunch of farmland, uh, some sugarcane farm, and a bunch of other uh, buildings and apartments around. Heading north from the island, we come across this small little area here. Which has these three stone trolls, which I built. Kind of frozen after they got caught out in the sunlight. And then strangely enough, just uh, over here northeast of that village is a custom pillager tower that I built and put in a couple pillagers. I thought there's going to, not going to be any spawning in this ancient uh, old land, so I thought maybe put a, my own in here. So now if we flip right around and head to the southwest, away from the village island, we're going to cross over this land, past the ice pillars and stuff, over these mountains. I have a tunnel which goes all the way through these mountains, and then we emerge way over here by the River Overlook Rest Area. So this rest stop is a nice place for travelers to board their horses and take a rest for the night uh, while they're traveling this way. And then nearby we have a zombie XP spawn farm right here. Uh, the inside isn't much to look at, but I do like uh, the way this outside came out. It's more kind of a gothic cathedral type look to it with all the stone and the buttresses and stuff. So I'm very happy with the way that one came out. So the road continues heading west and south away from the zombie spawner and the overlook rest area. And then eventually we're going to end up way over here at the end of the road, which is the guild house. So this is a rest and re a supply area for guild members. Don't ask me exactly what the guild is. I don't belong to it. So they have uh, little guild houses here and there scattered across the world where guild members can come in there, uh, do trading, rest, have meetings, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So if we head on south, directly from the guild house, we have more roads leading all the way to this little box canyon, which I think I've named Smuggler's Rest. And this thing is surrounded by all these steep cliffs. When I got there, it was just basically a hole. There was no way in and out unless you went over the mountains and in. So I dug tunnels on each end so the road can go straight through it. So I've just added a few uh, houses here and there. We've got some stables, got a store, a tavern and stuff, and a little blacksmith. And then directly uh, farther south from here, we can get all the way over here to the Guardian Farm, which I've built to be very large and uh, completely formed from the blocks of the temple that I tore down to uh, create the space for the guardians to spawn. And it actually produces uh, quite a few guardian drops. You sit over here and there's guardians for hours just flowing down and filling up my storage area. And then speaking of storage area, I have a very large storage area down here with the uh, item sorters for all the different drops you're going to get from all the guardians. And I think it's kind of cool. I've got this hidden door here. You flip the switch, and then the floor actually opens up, and then you can go down past the redstone here and all the way down to the bottom to where the drops, hoppers are where the guardians drop on. And it has the feeder that goes all the way back up into my sorting and storage system. So following the road out west, away from the Guardian Farm, 
We come past a few occasional rest areas and tourist spots like the, uh, what I'm calling the pit, which is just basically this large deep canyon just sliced out of the land. And then if you follow the road crossing fields and desert, and you finally get uh, to this desert oasis, which I have next to a desert temple, uh, which has some XP farms over there. But the main point of interest in this area is the walled city. So this is actually called Sandy Point. So Sandy Point Desert Village. So this, once again, was just a tiny little desert village. Uh, all natural. And I've just started expanding it, leveling it out, adding more buildings, adding the giant wall around it to protect all the villagers. Uh, lots of apartment buildings stuck with the sandstone uh, building blocks because it is a desert. So I figured you use, use what you got in the desert. So the main highlights of this one, we have just a small church, of course, the giant wall. And then I did put some underground crypts in the church, which I thought were pretty nifty. But then nearby, if you follow the road away from the city to the coast, we have this tiny little settlement, which is named Horse Harbor. And I think it's because I found a horse here when I got here. But there's just a couple houses and some farms and then this lighthouse. And this is actually the last point on the main continent where I have traveled. As far as I know, if you keep going west, there's just water this way. I haven't actually explored any farther this way. But there are lands farther, much, much farther west of here. Because at one point I jumped into the nether and just traveled over like a thousand blocks west. Well, we got bridges and stuff in the nether to get all over there, but I wanted to actually get brand new land generation. I believe this was the ocean update or something. And I was not disappointed because when I came out of the portal, we spawned right over the white ocean. And the only nearest land I could actually see was this tiny little island over there. So I called it Salvation Island because <laughs> it's the only place land I had as far as I could see. So I've created underwater tunnels going all the way from the portal, past this brewing platform to the island. So I put a tiny little square main house here. Um, I did build this large wizard's tower. And then I've joined everything up with underground tunnels, which go deep underground and go all the way over to the Mesa biome, which is just south of here. So if we're just going to fly over here to the Mesa biome, and that's where I have this other base sit on top of the Mesa biome, just kind of built to look like it is part of the mountain. So all you can see is the roof sticking out. Most of that's going to be glass. And there's a few buildings and stuff here. Uh, the outstanding feature actually here at the Mesa biome is the sorting system again. So this is, much, this is even bigger than the Guardian Farm sorting system. So I've got this item sorter where you drop things in the uh, chest up top and it comes down here. And then we have all these different chests with all the different types of items that you can sort. It makes it really convenient. So as you go mining and collecting stuff, you come back, dump it all in the chest, and all goes to where it needs to be. So that covers all the expansion here we've done to the southwest of Spawn. So I think next we'll go all the way back to Spawn again and then follow the world northeast so you can see what I built in that direction. That was all built before all of this stuff. So here we are back at spawn once again. So now if you look at the roads, if you follow this road all the way north, it's going to take you to the stronghold. I really not built anything there. I just kind of hollowed out a hole 
added in another portal. And of course, we have the portal that goes into the end, is there. So we are going to head east across this road. I've got a, quite a few number of uh, covered bridges on this road. I thought that was good when I was going through every bridge I put. I put, tried to make it a little unique and put a covering on it and that kind of stuff. Just to give it a little, little style. But if we keep going this way, we run into my Christmas area. So I built a gigantic uh, snowman atop a gigantic uh, snow pyramid. And then next to it, we have this tiny little gingerbread house. Um, I may have to think of something else for one of these other Christmases, but I came across those for a couple of my Christmas uh, episodes. I thought it's always nice to break away and just build something fun and Christmassy. And if we keep following this road all the way out to the end over here, we end up at what I call Winterhold. So this started as just a tiny little mine, one of the first mines or second mines I had when I headed this way. It was just a hole in the wall and I just dug all the way down and was mining. And then eventually I decided this would be a good area to put a base on. So I, since we're in the snow and the ice, I decided to build it out of snow and ice and cold stuff. So we have in here just a few extra rooms, a large library lounge area, a giant map of the area around here, uh, some enchanting areas, potions, and a lot of number of bedrooms. I uh, have this nice glass roof over the top, so everything's an open design. Uh, we're going to ignore the fact that you freeze to death and you're trying to live here because there's no walls or heat, but overall I like the way this came out. So if we follow the road north east from uh, Winterhold here, you're going to see some drastic biome changes where we, the icy uh, wasteland just cuts off and goes into a different biome. And that's just because I was monkeying around with the chunks and as I've upgraded different versions, I've deleted chunks I've not built in. Because when I first started this, it was ice as far as I, as far as I could go. It was ice, ice, ice. And I was getting tired of the ice, so I just said, well, we'll just... Before I upgrade to a new uh, version with new biomes, I would just cut out some of the ice biomes. I think I cut them a little close to the road myself. I should have left them farther out. But I do have this road that goes all the way out here. So you get into the non-icy area. And then we get some fields. And I've got one of my favorite builds right over here, which is um, this ruined tower. So here I imagine we have this ancient tower, ancient fortress area, and it's been there for thousands and thousands of years, not used after the people left. And eventually the tower just sort of crumbled and fell and dropped off to the side. So I just sort of built the tower and pushed it over and imagined what it would look like, the trees and all that kind of stuff coming through it. And I am actually, uh, I do like this one. It's, I don't know why, but I just love this completely non-functional, just aesthetic build. So maybe someday I may come back here and add the rest of the ruins. I think maybe a ruined castle and some other ruined buildings would, would kind of go well in this area. So the road keeps heading east over hills and rivers, uh, past this dark oak forest where I've got a lumber yard built. And then around here to this uh, treehouse rest area, which is another early build. Um, I was just looking for a place to sleep, so I thought, oh, I'll just build it inside the tree, which kept me from uh, getting all attacked by mobs. And then I just pushed the road out, continuing to head east and north. Uh, we come across this unique structure, which is actually an old-style desert temple. Because if you notice, it has the orange wool instead of the orange uh, terracotta in the towers. And you won't see that uh, anymore. So if we follow the road up north of the desert temple, across this area, we finally get over to the area of uh, Westlake. So I built this road and then the tunnel many years ago. 
And as I was here, I just sort of made a mental note that yes, we need to put a lakeside resort here. So this is what I came up with. So the main building here is this uh, two-story lodge with lots of uh, rooms in it, a little pub bar area down below, uh, a deck overlooking the river. And then we have a boat landing and stables, so the horses, so you can board your horses when you stay here. And then all the way around the lake, I've added in uh, little buildings and houses and cottages. And then this is more of a, like a outdoor re vacation area where you can go and just sit by the lake, go fishing, and just kind of relax. So if we continue on north, following the road through the birch forest, we come across the plains and eventually end up at this uh, large village here. Once again, this was just a bunch of, you know, naturally spawned village houses and villagers. So I put the uh, wall around it and kind of expanded it all to make a whole city out of it. The defensive walls here are mainly because we were having pillager raids, so I want to make sure that the city didn't get raided while I was building it and stuff. And then I've added the giant apartment buildings on one end and the huge inn here and then some shopping areas and stuff. And then one Halloween I got... Uh, the idea to add a giant pumpkin patch and then in the middle of it we have this redstone activated great pumpkin that pops up when the sun sets down and grants your wishes if you've been a good boy or girl so away from the village following the road a tiny little rest area and then we come into what was the first build, really, in my series, which is this lakeside castle. So I kind of set this up as my main uh, base of operations. So we have a, you know, it's a full castle. It's got the towers, got the throne room, got a bunch of storage in it. Um, I later added in uh, some villager area so they can live. We have a library in here. And then... I tried my hand at some redstone, so we got the 3x3 three three redstone doors on, on either side of the, the main entrance. I'll probably never try that again, because that was a pain, just trying to get that reproduced and build that. And then after building the castle, I've added in all the outbuildings here. So we've got the barn, we've got some fields, got some houses for nether stuff, some blacksmithing houses. Um, a giant inn and stables on one side and then you know another portal gold farm over here which is a very large used to produce a lot of gold doesn't much anymore because the mechanics have all kind of changed and then another of my christmas builds sits here overlooking the whole area which is this gigantic santa claus So we have a number of roads heading away from the castle. So we got the one that heads, goes into the horse meadow where I've got a small stable and a barn and got some horse supply there. If we take this other one also heading slightly north, we're gonna swing past this gigantic spruce tree, which I built. Uh, very, I'm not happy with. I, the tree's fine, I'm not happy with the top. It looks a little stunted and short, so I need to figure out you know, sometime come back here with the boxes full of spruce leaves and just figure out how to get it looking normal because it looks a little weird at the time right now but anyhow let's ignore that we're just going to go all the way over to the beach where i have my la playa resort so i was trying to give this more of a tropical feel so i've got all these little straw huts and uh, recliners all over the beach uh, this big central tower which is where the main apartment uh, suites are where you can rent them and keep and stay here for you know and have a nice vacation 
Um, on top, got a couple of these penthouse huts where people can lounge and look over the beach. And, you know, I've got snack shacks. We have a scuba shop over here on these little islands and all the way across the harbor. And this was actually built before the aquatic update. So it's just plain old ocean. Um, I did, you know, parse, you know, remove a few chunks nearby as close as I could get. And actually got lucky because we ended up with a warm ocean right next door. So it actually kind of fits. <laughs> Out of luck, I've got a warm ocean next to a nice warm seaside beach resort. So now if we take a boat and head straight north all the way across the sea, we're going to run into the savanna biome. And then right here was another, yet another tiny little natural village that I've turned into an actual city. So I've named this area Llama Village because there's a bunch of llamas all the way on top of the hill. And then I went through and added in some normal buildings and then I actually decided to go with this, I don't know, maybe Mediterranean feel I'm thinking. Uh, with all these giant apartment buildings and houses just sort of hugging the cliff here and overlooking the whole area so we've got the terracotta and sandstone look to everything sort of a meta i'm hoping it gives it a mediterranean feel i kind of like the way this looks overall so after i once again you know trimmed out a lot of uh, the extra chunks around here so the new water biomes and stuff would spawn the only odd thing is I've got this gigantic iceberg field right offshore, which kind of clashes with the heat of the desert savanna look that I get for the city. So now we are going to follow the road out uh, west across the savanna to pass the desert. Eventually, we're going to swing all the way up here and get to this giant uh, walled city, which is the Desert Temple Museum City. So this uh, was a, just a couple of buildings on the water there, and I decided to put a gigantic kind of a walled city around them. Uh, that kind of stuck with the orange desert temple look. So you kind of got that bright orange border on top of the wall there. And inside I've got a few buildings and stuff. There's the actual desert temple inside uh, the village, which has been turned into a museum. And then actually attached to it was a naturally spotting uh, fossil. Right in the hillside there, so I haven't touched the fossil at all, but I did build a wall around it and a building around it, really, to house another museum here where I've got a few fossils that I've made myself. So we've got a few skeletons and then a few artifacts and stuff in on display. So if we follow the road just east of the Desert Temple Museum City, we're going to come to this area which has these three giant towers overlooking this very large village they've expanded on the Savannah Plains. So the three towers are we have the Citadel, which is the Rock Tower, and then we have the White Tower and the Dark Tower. And it should be obvious which are which. So this area actually started out as one simple little house as a rest area underneath the cliffside here. Because I was just passing through. You know, there was a village here, built the house, and they headed on over to the other museum city. And that's where I actually started to work. And then I, well, I was coming back through here. I said, well, let's uh, expand the Savannah Village and make a nice large village out of it. So I put the wall around it for protection. And then added in all the buildings and the housing. And really went crazy with the villagers. So... At some point, the uh, iron golems spawned like mad uh, based on the number of villagers. I don't think they spawn like that anymore, but so I've got tons of villagers and tons of iron golems here. So over here, I have a mining office and center of operations. I've got the cranes and the mine rails running into this mine shaft. 
up here I put a hazmat station and then if you head on down I've decorated this up like it's a working mine so we got boxes of ores mine tracks running you know back and forth you know it goes down to different levels got crafting benches more boxes of ores this one area I've got a um, ore cleaning machine which is a redstone device which really does nothing except uh, move some pistons around on top of some water but you can imagine it's you put your ore in there and the water is going to run through the ore and the pistons are going to you know, agitate it all and you're going to get all the gold and diamonds or iron or whatever you want out of your mine so I just really just tried to make this an atmospheric mine so you go through here it looks like it's a working mine you know little workstations here and there and areas um, not so much just me mining out the ores but to make just make it look like an actual mine. So north of the main city, I've put in this large uh, fields of wheat and other farming area for sheep and cows and stuff. Because that the agricultural area be this outside the city here, and it'll feed into the city. And then if we swing around, we come to what I'm calling the citadel. So I wanted to make a large stone tower building, multiple towers and that kind of stuff. So this is my approach to it. So we have tons of quarters in here. We've got areas, you know, halls. We've got nether portals. We've got brewing areas. Um, this one tower is actually a dark room spawner. So you've got different levels where different mobs spawn. You get washed down and get collected down at the bottom of the tower. And then the other towers just house different rooms and storage and all the necessities you need for running a whole citadel. I pictured this as a place where I have the people who used to run the area. It's They're not in charge anymore, so other people have moved in and taken over. But this is their initial building that they built. So I tried to make it look you know, a little old, but a little new at the same time. So across the way from the Citadel, we actually have a bridge joining the two areas, is the White Tower. So this is where, I guess, the White Wizards live. It's more of a place for rest and healing and recuperation where they help the people of the Citadel and the village. So this is all diorite and quartz. Um, goes up as high as I could in the world at the time. And the first few levels are where the public comes in and there's a library and the portal room and all, you know, anything else, you know, eating area for the people who need help or are getting treated. And then farther up is more of a restricted area where all the, the actual uh, white wizards and stuff would reside and live and actually train. And if you follow it all the way up to the very top, there's this giant spell casting area where they do all their incantations and whatever magical stuff these wizards do. And then in contrast, all the way across the valley is the Dark Tower, built out of dark blocks and mainly nether, nether right, or nether rack blocks. So this is kind of where the dark wizards live. They're not very friendly, you know, there's no bridges or roads leading into it. This is where they train. Uh, it's mainly for just the practicing wizards to come in and out not for anyone else the citadel really doesn't have much no link to it the white tower definitely doesn't have a link to it they're kind of set opposite across the valley from each other but in here we've got libraries different rooms for different portals different uh, brewing areas lots of quarters we have areas for all the acolytes to stay and all the main wizards to stay and then at the very top, we have this altar area where they do all their, their magical incantations that whatever dark wizards do. So turning away from these three towers in the village here, we can follow the road out west. So we're going to go across the fields, uh, past forests. We have the occasional rest area here and there. 
If we keep zooming on across this area, we're finally going to reach um, a monastery. So I tried to keep this a natural looking area. We've got the wall with all the cloisters around the edge of this village. A few occasional houses here and there to house the monks. And then another church here with the uh, stained glass zombie uh, window. So last up now, we are going to zip all the way back east. We're finally going to get over here to uh, Bay City. So this city started out as a little bay with a couple villager, of course, villagers, houses on the shore. And I got this idea to build this whole oceanfront dockside area with all this black and white, you know, the white uh, warehouses with the you know, black trim and stuff, kind of you know, 17th, 18th century dockside is uh, kind of the approach I was going for with this. So um, the warehouses actually have item sorters in them so you can dump items into chests on either end of the bay and they'll go through and get stored into the different buildings for the different items, which is uh, very helpful. And then uh, mainly the building was on this one side over here. So we've got um, all these houses and then the fields off to the side. Um, once again, I put a wall around it to protect everybody. And then once I get the wraparound warehouses built on this opposite side, I added in more buildings and stuff because this initially was just where I landed on the dock and built a little, little base of operations and then swam across the bay and did all of my work on the city. And the city just kind of expanded all the way over here to include the whole bay and both sides. So I have this rail system. It takes you from... Uh, all around the different points of the city and then it also follows all the way out just shortly outside of the city here to this multiple XP uh, spawner I have. There's like three spawners just in the right proximity where I can stand in one place, activate all three and collect all the mobs for XP and it's very efficient because you just stand there for a little while and you have tons of mobs so I can recharge uh, my tools and get my XP I need so it comes in very handy so I'm always running back here to you know restock and restore everything And then nearby in the swamp over here is another special project that I came up with probably on a Halloween or something. I don't remember exactly when off the top of my head, but there is a witch hut right there. So I thought, you know, witch huts are pretty plain and basic. So I thought, let's see what it should look like. So I expanded it out, made the hut a little bigger, added in the cauldrons and the brew stuff and all the different potion uh, ingredients that the witch is going to need and then outside we have some burning cauldrons and other little garden area so this is so I thought this would make this is what a witch hut should look like when it spawns not just a plain old boring looking little hut but an actual place it looks like the witch is staying there and living in and you don't want to go near it because the witch is going to get you So this brings us back across the ocean from the Bay City to our current build, which I've been doing for about a year or so. So I'm almost done and completed with this, but this is my Oceana 
city. Uh, based off of an Atlantis design with the uh, central island and then the rings around it. So I've got a central ring for administration, then we have a ring for housing, a ring for farms, and then a ring for industrial entertainment commercial buildings. So the central building here is a sun temple. I built this nice temple here and aligned it so if you stand right in the middle you can watch the sun rise on one side and set on the other side between the two windows and then we just have decorative you know, armor and stuff all around as you would in an administrative temple type building and the next out we have this ring where i've got a bunch of housing all crammed in like it's a very livable living area and i brought in some villagers from other places so this is one of those villages that didn't actually start out as a villager village because it was just water. So I actually had to import my villagers, but they seem to be uh, happy and doing well. Um, I did put this ship here. It was actually one of the first things I built was this ship, which actually is one of the better ships I built for the very first ship I've ever built at all. Um, and that is my main base of operations here where I store all my stuff and have all my uh, equipment and tools and workbenches and stuff in and it's come in very handy here and then next up I've got all the farming rings so I went through and did every farm I could think of and tried to put it into the ring to add it in there the only one I missed out on is the gunpowder farm which I had to put into the commercial ring out there but this one has you know all the wheat on the either edge of the ring and then inside we have our, our sugar cane we have our uh, pumpkin farms we have our uh, wool farm we have our nether wart farm we have our sheep farm our, we have our bamboo farm all that kind of farm tree farms everything you think, think of it all go all the farms go into this one ring and then on the very outside we have this bigger ring which is all our industrial commercial stuff so this is where all our shops go where all our buildings go hospitals inns um one out another guild house um, i also put in a bunch of warehouses with cranes which will unload and load goods into the ships as they drop them off and pick them up so it's go around here we have a giant hotel we have our gunpowder farm we have this gigantic cathedral that i built here and then swing around here we have a little farm or zoo actually not a farm it's a zoo and then some other buildings and then the entrance into to get into the rings into the city we got these gigantic defensive towers here which uh, prevents anyone unwanted from getting inside the rings into the city because all visitors should be docking on the outside of the ring. And that wraps everything up for now. That's where we are in the world. I tried to keep this as brief as possible, but there is a lot to see. So if you are interested in in-depth, detailed, step-by-step, uh, tour of the place I did one a year or half ago I will put all links in the description below so you can see all the different you'll highlight all the different areas so you can just go to all the different episodes for the tour and then um, each one of these places I built in depth so if you want to see me build any of these you can go back and watch all my previous episodes they uh, will give you all you need to know about build what I did to build all this but next up, we are going to keep building and build more stuff. I just need to finish here at the Ocean City. I'm almost done. So close. I tried to get down before I did any of this world tour, but just couldn't make it. I don't like to rush things. I don't like to do the build everything off screen and just show you the picture. It's like, look what I did. Here you go. It's like, no, I, I kind of treat this like it's you're going to watch it build for build. Sometimes it's boring. Sometimes it's slow. Sometimes it's good. It is what it is, but after I get done building the Ocean City, we are going to go on kind of a walkabout. So we are going to go out, find new terrain, new places, look at the new mountains and all the new 
biomes they've added. Maybe 1.19 will be out by then. Then we'll see some mangroves and other biomes. But for now, I want to thank you all very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this tour, and I hope you enjoy uh, the videos. And I hope you have a wonderful day, everybody. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.